Hello and thanks for clicking on this video about AC circuits. So this is the first video in my series about alternating current circuits and how they basically work. So in this video, it's an introduction. So I'm going to introduce AC circuits as a subject. I'm going to outline what we're going to learn in this series of videos and probably most importantly, why we're learning it. You know, th there's a real solid reason for doing what we're going to do. And it's, it's not an easy subject to get a, your head around, but it's incredibly important in all facets of electrical engineering. So after I've covered that brief um, overview of the, the, the series of videos, I'm going to just briefly introduce what AC waveforms are and talk about their uh, key features. So with that, let's make a start. So in this series of videos, as I already mentioned, I'm going to introduce AC circuits and we're going to talk a lot about how we can analyze AC circuits. The good news here is that there are no new circuit analysis techniques just for AC circuits. If you know a circuit analysis technique that works at DC, like you saw in my previous videos, then that technique will definitely work at AC as well. It's just that the maths is a little bit more tricky. So we're going to cover that in quite a lot of detail. Most of the circuits, certainly in the first sort of 10 videos, will focus on fixed frequency operation. So that's, as you can imagine, if you plug something into the socket of your home, the frequency will be fixed. It might be 50 hertz, it might be 60 hertz, depending on where you live. Every component in that circuit will be operating at that frequency. There won't be variable frequencies. The subject can become a little bit more complex when we move on to variable frequencies. So you might think of a variable frequency system as a filter. We put an infinite number of different frequencies in and it only lets a certain number of frequencies through. That's, a, that's an example of a variable frequency AC circuit. And the maths again is a little bit more difficult. Also in this series of videos, we're going to touch on the concept of complex power in AC circuits. And we're also going to talk about resonance. So the question is why, why is any of this important? And well, by definition, almost all signals in electrical circuits are time varying waveforms. So if you think about a communication signal, it's a time varying radio signals. It's all time varying signals. And of course, power is transmitted using AC as well. So if you want to understand the generation and transmission of power, we really need a good grasp of AC circuits. And finally, this introductory material that I'm teaching in this series of videos, it's basically fundamental for a vast number of um, electrical engineering courses you'll come across as you, you sort of study more complicated and different aspects of the subject. So that's why we're doing it. So let's move on and start looking at what an AC, what an AC waveform actually is. So what is an AC waveform? What does AC actually mean? And if you looked at an AC waveform on an oscilloscope, what would you expect to see? So pause the video for a few moments and really think to yourself about those questions. On this slide, I've got some screenshots from an oscilloscope and I'm showing various AC waveforms or alternating waveforms. We have a square or a step waveform. So you can see here it's at one DC level for a given amount of time and then you do a step change and you're at another DC level and that repeats indefinitely. So you can see it's periodic and it has a time period of T and that's the time between from here to here and that's where the waveform starts to repeat again. So that is known as the period and in terms of voltage we have a positive peak which would be on here. I can't read the scale so we don't know what it is. Let's just call it one volt and a negative peak which would be here, let's call that minus one volt. And then we have a peak to peak, which would be found by doing one volt minus minus one, which equals two volts. So if we imagine if this was one volt and a peak, minus one volts, it's negative peak, the peak to peak would be two volts. Exactly the same for the other two waveforms. Here we have another AC waveform, it's triangular. So we can see, again, it's got a period and it's got a amplitude or a peak and a negative peak. So it has a peak to peak. And finally, the more common case and what we're going to be looking at almost exclusively in this 
because the sinusoidal waveforms are cosinusoidal. So again, we have a period, which is basically one block or one repeating unit of the waveform. And it has an amplitude or a peak here and a peak to peak voltage, which is basically the positive minus the negative. So those are all examples of AC waveforms. So why are they so important? Well, it's because they're periodic, which means they're predictable. So we can accurately predict the instantaneous value of a waveform. Let's imagine it's a sinusoid at any given time. So if you have a mathematical expression for your waveform, I could give you a time. It could be one million years from now, plus one second, and you'd be able to tell me exactly what the voltage would be at that time. So they're entirely predictable, and that makes them really good and useful in complex systems, such as communication systems. There's another massive advantage, which is not really mentioned on this slide, is that they can be used with transformers. So when we're dealing with power transmission, you can have a very high voltage in your, your high voltage sort of transmission network, but then when you want to use it in your home, we can step that voltage down using a transformer. And that's an extremely powerful thing to be able to do because it's much more efficient to transmit electricity at high voltages and low currents. But obviously, in your home, your equipment's all low voltage for safety reasons, although the voltage isn't that low, and it's definitely not safe. But that's one of the use for AC waveforms. You can't do that with DC. You need to use, say, a switch mode power supply to convert the voltage down. And when you're going from hundreds of thousands of volts to hundreds of volts like you use in your home, it's not so trivial. The, the cost of that device is a lot more expensive than the equivalent transformer. So for the purpose of this module, we're mostly interested in sinusoidal waveforms because this is the form used in voltage and current sources. On this slide, I have a typical representation of a sine wave. So you can see it's two axes. It's a voltage waveform. It's the y-axis has been labeled with a V and it's got a time axis, which is our x-axis. So here's time. It could be in seconds, minutes, microseconds, whatever, but it's a time axis. And we have our sinusoidal waveform. You can see it crosses zero here, here, and here, and that gives us one period. Although on this particular example, I've labeled the period from here to here. It could quite as well be from here to here. I just prefer to see when it cuts the zero axis, and that defines as one half cycle, a second half cycle, so that is one full period. So it has a period. So if we take the reciprocal of period, so one over T, we get the frequency. So if our period is in seconds, our frequency will be in Hertz. HZ should have a capital H because it's a person's name. So frequency is in Hertz. Of course, it's got an amplitude. And in this case, our amplitude will be in volts because it's a voltage waveform. And our amplitude is basically the peak of the positive half cycle. So it should always be the same. So that's the amplitude. And if we look at this amplitude here, so this is the sort of the negative or the, the, the negative peak, and we take the difference between the two, we'll get the peak to peak amplitude. So here we've labeled it as peak to peak amplitude. Tend to write it with the symbol VPP, which tells us V peak to peak. And whereas the amplitude can just be written as VP, telling us it's basically the peak. There's also the concept of phase on this graph, and that's basically where this graph cuts this zero time at points. So we can imagine redrawing this waveform, but shift it to the, le the left a little bit, and it would look more like this. Or we could shift it to the right a little bit, and it would look more like this. And that's phase. This difference here is known as a phase shift. So in this particular case, we can see you've just got a pure sine wave. There is no phase shift. To mathematically re represent a sinusoid, we need three key pieces of information. And you can get them all from that graph on the previous slides. So we need the amplitude. If it's a voltage waveform, obviously that will be in volts. We need a frequency, which we can get by looking for one complete oscillation or one repeating unit on the waveform. And we need the phase which we can calculate from where the graph cuts the origin at time t equals zero.
if we have all that information, we can represent our size side using one of these two expressions. Basically, the voltage at any given time is equal to the amplitude or the peak voltage times psi times what's in these brackets, and we can see we have frequency. This is our, our variable, the time we're interested in, and our phase shift. It's worth noting here our frequency is in hertz and our time will be in seconds. What we can do is say that 2 pi f is equal to omega, which is our angular frequency. So omega equals angular frequency. It's equal to 2 pi f and it has a unit of radians per second. So let's look at this expression again. Here we've got radians per second, that's our angular frequency, and we're multiplying it by seconds. So that removes the per second here because we're timesing it by s, so those cancel. So this term just becomes a value in radians. Plus our phase shift, which must also be in radians. So we don't want this in degrees. It's very tempting to put it in degrees, but it must be in radians then this will be radians, and we must have our calculator set in radians mode. So normally, by default, your calculator will be set in degrees. We need it in radians mode for this course. So do that now, take your calculator and figure out how to set it into radians mode. So let's have a look at an example. Let's say we have a sine wave with a 10 volt amplitude. Its frequency is 50 hertz. We won't bother with any phase. We'll say our phase shift is zero radians. Let's try an example now. Let's assume that we want to find the voltage at time equals 66 milliseconds. So we have our waveform and we want to know what the voltage would be after 66 milliseconds. So pause the video now and have a go. So to answer this, let's write out our equation. So we know our amplitude is equal to 10. Then we'll write our sine. Then we'll multiply by 2 times pi times our frequency, which is 50, times 66 milli. We could write plus 0, but we don't need to. So let's tap that into our calculator now. So 2 times pi times 50 is 100 pi, times 66 e minus 3 gives us 33 over 5 times pi. So let's write that out. 10 sine 33 over 5 times pi, which equals, so I'll take a sine of that, making sure I'm in radians mode, times 10, which equals 9.51 volts. So that's the voltage at 66 milliseconds. You could change that to 60 milliseconds, 75, whatever. That will tell you the voltage at any given time. So if you went into Excel and you wrote this equation out and you gave it a thousand different time values, you could plot the waveform. You'd get your sign aside. So just if you didn't get 9.5 here, it's probably because you didn't have your calculator set into radians mode. So let me just tell you what the wrong answer is. So if I do now with my calculator in degrees mode, 2 times pi times 50 times 66 e minus 3, take a sign of that, answer times 10, I get 3.5 volts. So if you got V equals 3.5 for volts, it's basically wrong. incorrect because you were in degrees not radians so every calculator is different i can't tell you how to change it but if you look at the instruction manual or some online guide you'll find out how to change your calculator from degrees to radians as i said if you use that equation and you, you plot it in excel or some other computer software you will get a a representation of your your sine wave. However, on this particular plot, I've converted my x-axis 
not into time anymore. It's going to be the angular frequency times time. So it's actually in radians. And as you already know, once you go one full rotation or one full period, you actually cover two pi radians. And this will help us view phase shifts or sort of visualize what phase shifts look like a little clearer. So here we can see we've got our sine wave and now we've added a phase shift. So we add a phase shift and we're moving in this direction. So our waveform has jumped from peaking here at pi over two to now peaking at zero. So this is it's essentially the same waveform, but now we've added a phase shift of pi over two or 90 degrees. And if you've got a keen eye, you'll actually see that this is actually now a cosine rather than a sine. If we subtracted pi over two, what we would do is we would shift the peak in this direction and our new peak would be here and our waveform would look something like this. You get the idea, it's really hard to draw these on a, on a tablet. Making the graph look too messy now. So that's the concept of phase shift and it just shifts the, the waveform left or right on this time or, you know, working time or in radians or whatever axis you've got. It'll move it left or right. Just to make that a little clearer, here I've drawn two phase shifted waveforms. We can see on the top plot, we've got our original sine wave, and then we've added a phase shift of pi over two on 90 degrees, and that's shifted it to the left, the peak. And we can subtract our pi over two phase shift, and this time we've shifted everything to the right. So it's as simple as that. We need to be really careful with this though, because sometimes, and this course is a prime example because I do it all the time, the phase shift will be specified in degrees. So here you might see a waveform that basically looks something like this. Vt equals V amplitude sine, and it'll say omega t, and that might be a value, you know, it might be 50t plus and then I'll give a value in degrees. And that's pretty bad of me, but it's just the sort of standard. Everybody seems to do that. And it's, it's, it's wrong. You know, this is in radians and this is in degrees. So to actually calculate the voltage at a given time, you either have to convert this term into a degrees or convert this into radians. So it's, it's kind of wrong and we do it in every lecture, but it's the case that everybody does it, even though it is wrong. So that might seem confusing, but it'll all become clear as we do some practice. So just to summarize our sinusoidal voltage waveform and the expression for it, the expression, and you'll need to remember this for the exam, but you'll be writing it that much, you, you won't need to consciously remember it. You'll just be, you know, it'll be ingrained. So here, the voltage for a waveform at any given time, or it could be a current, it could be a power, it doesn't really matter. The voltage at a given time is equal to the amplitude times sine and our argument in the brackets is going to be the angular frequency in radians per second times time. We can also sometimes write that as our angular frequency is equal to 2 pi f, where f is the frequency in hertz, and we can calculate the period from the frequency by doing this little expression here. So frequency is equal to 1 over t, or in other words, t equals 1 over f. And this is the time period for one cycle and has the units of seconds. So here, our complete period would be this amount of time on this axis. So that's one period. As you know, and as we've already seen on previous slides, that cosines and sines are essentially the same waveform. They just have a phase shift. So we've already seen a voltage or current can be expressed by VT equals the amplitude times sine omega t plus theta. However, we can write that in cosine form just as easily. It's exactly the same thing. These are equivalent using the same expression here, vt equals the amplitude times, but now we can convert from sine to cos simply by subtracting 90 degrees. So convince yourself of that. Let's just do sine 30 degrees. We're working in degrees now, so you need your calculator in degrees mode. We do sine 30 degrees, gives us a half, so that's equal to 0 0.5. Now if we do cosine of 30 
minus 90, so that equals minus 60. We also get half, cos minus 60 degrees equals 0 0.5. So now we've converted our sine into a cosine format. This is going to become really crucial. So in this course, we're always going to use cosines. The reason we do that is because we need a convention. So we're always working on the same page, essentially. We're always doing the same thing. So we're always going to use cosine convention in this module just to be consistent. But you may find exam questions where you've got a voltage expressed as a sign. You may pick up a book from the library and there they're using sine convention. So all their voltages will be expressed as sine waves. You need to be able to convert from sine to cosine so we're always consistent. And there's a story a few years ago when I had to ask another member of staff to cover one of my lectures. And of course, he started using sign convention and it caused chaos. So just be aware that we'll always use cosines to express our waveforms. So here we just summarize that. We have our, if we have our waveform in expressed as a cosine, we can add 90 degrees to make it a sine wave. And if we've got our uh, sine, we've got our waveform expressed as a sine wave, we can subtract 90 degrees to make it into a cosine. However, be aware, and this is a perfect example of what I said can be confusing. If we've got an angular frequency here, this is in radians. And of course, this has been specified in degrees. So you would have to convert one of those two to match the other to be able to calculate what's, you know, what the cosine of is inside the bracket. So just to summarize this video, we began by um, going over what content this, this series of videos is going to cover. And we spoke a little bit about why that's important. We also spent some time looking at a specific type of AC signal that was a sinusoid. We looked at its key parameters, such as its amplitude, its frequency, and its phase. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can describe that sinusoid mathematically. So we won't always write like sine omega t to define a, a sine wave. We, we might write that in different forms and I'll explain the different forms and I'll also explain why we want to use different forms at different times. And it's basically to make our life easier. So with that, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, of course, put them in the chats. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.